In this video, I will show you how to write down a, a linear context-free rewriting system, so a LCFRS, in SRCG syntax that describes this language. You can see it's a to the power of n, b to the power of m, c to the power of n, and d to the power of n. So we have we have a and c with the same amount. And we have B and D with the same amount. And that's now what we want to have, what we want to generate. So I will start with the start symbol. And now, um, well, my idea is that A and C, because they have the same amount, they shall be generated together because well, you know, if you have a context-free grammar and you want to make sure that two things have the same amount, you just generate them so together, just like a to the power of n, b to the power of n. If you have a rule like this, you will always have the same amount of a's and b's because you generate them together. And that's what that's my idea behind this. So I want I want to have a symbol, in this case I just call it A. This, this is supposed to generate my A and C strings, so it, it's supposed to generate two strings for me. I just call them X and Y. And those X and Y, they shall be included in the overall string. So the X will contain my A's, so it shall be included at the first position. And the Y shall include all my C's and so it will be at the third position. And the same ideas behind the B's and the D's. I will now create a new non-terminal B with two variables V and W. And I want, them to, I want this B to create my B's and my D's so they will have the same amount. And I want my B's in the V and my D's in the W. And the B's shall be between the A's and the C's, so it shall be at the second position. And the D shall be at the last position, so it will be concatenated here in the, in the last position. Now I will begin with generating, with filling the B string, because I think it's simpler. So the the language, it says M is, is allowed to be zero. So that means B and D are allowed to be empty. So they are allowed to be epsilon. And that would look like this. B will generate two strings for me. One will be filled with epsilon and the other will be filled with epsilon. And this doesn't depend on any other items. So at the right hand side on the rule, there will be Epsilon. That just means I can apply this rule every time without the need of creating other items or requesting other items. Now I want to fill the B with D and C. So I will have another B that generates two strings. But this B will depend on another B. So it's, it's a recursive rule. And I can just, you know, um, this B can create another B and it can also call another B and so on and so on. So it, they can generate me as B, many Bs and Ds as I want until it stops eventually with this rule. So it's a recursive rule. So this B, well, the, the variables are just have a scope in one line so I can reuse them. The B will generate two strings X and Y, and I, at this position, I don't know how often the rule was called, so I don't know what's in that X or Y. But I want to add more Bs and Ds to them, so I will take whatever is in the X and append an, uh, a B. It doesn't really matter. I could just I could write the B first and then append the X. It, it doesn't matter in this case. It's it it makes the same 
So, and in the second position, I have my y and I add another d to it. So now let's, let's imagine what it does. If I call this first, I will have a b with two empty strings. When I apply, when I put it into that rule, I will get a new b where those epsilons are concatenated with b and d. So I will have a b uh, that generates two strings b and d. And if I put it again into this part of the rule, it will append another b and d, and I will be I will having two b's and two d's, and so on and so on. And eventually, it will be it will be inserted into this b and will generate the b's and d's of my whole string. Now I want to do the same for the a's. The a's are supposed to have an amount of or the a's and c's are supposed to have an amount greater or equal than one. So I'm not allowed. I will not. Um, I will not start the rule with epsilons, but with two strings a and c. So I will fill the a not with epsilon but with a and c, and that depends on no other items. And then I need the recursive rule so that I can get as many A's and C's as I want. And this one just looks like the B rule. I can use any two variable names. I can reuse X and Y. And whatever is in the X shall be appended with an A. And whatever is in the Y shall be appended with a C. And now this is... a uh, this is just, um, be besides that one difference, this is the same explanation that holds, that I gave you for the B items that holds for the A. So it will just, it will generate always the same amounts of A's and C's in those both two strings. And they will at the end be included in the overall, overall string for the whole word. And this is my LCFRS for this language.